Hi, thank you everyone for joining us. Welcome to the Cultures of Peace Festival of the Northeast 2021. This year, we are looking at feminist responses to ecology through the themes of activism, academia, and performing arts, and listing a series of webinars, podcasts, video interviews, etc., on various aspects of ecology, climate crisis, and ecology in performing and creative arts in the Northeast. The program is curated by Angela Rangat and myself, Tingnam Angelika Samo. Today is the fourth webinar of the festival. Today we have Kong Agnes Karsing, Kong Marisa Nongru, and Malmit Lepcha speaking on the topic, environmental aggressions and resistances in Northeast India. The development discourse brings with it the challenge of resource extraction, how much, where, and the fallouts which prompt communities to respond many a times in the form of resistances to safeguard their air, water, and land. This webinar meets women who have been engaged in such forms of resistances against coal mining, coke factories, and dam building. The discussion will look at extractive, extractive industries and dam making and the environmental and human cause they create through the voices of those who have flagged these issues and been part of and led resistances. Our moderator today is Angela Rangar. Before we start, I would like to go over a few introductions before we begin. And you will find some interesting links coming via the chat box as well. Juban is a feminist publishing house and NGO that chronicles and participates in women's movement in India and Southeast, and Southeast Asia. For more, please visit our websites given in the chat box. The Cultures of Peace Festival of the Northeast program is a collaborative project run by Juban and the Hendrik Ball Stiftung, Regional Office, New Delhi. The project aims at creating spaces for dialogue within civil societies in the eight Northeastern states. Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura, and Sikkim, and contiguous regions. Through diverse forms of cultural production like writing, music, film, theater, media, art, and more, this ever evolving festival attempts to foreground many key issues that concern the region and its relationship with the rest of India or the mainland against a broader framework of gender, identities, indigenous rights, and peace building. In 2020, as part of the 10th year celebrations of our Cultures of Peace Festival, a multimedia resource, Media Archive, was created to bring together the learnings from the past decade and to house video interviews, podcasts, essays, and artwork that showcase the work of artists, writers, musicians, and other cultural practitioners that we have engaged with over the last decade. The building of the archive in 2020 was supplemented by a series of online engagements centered around two themes, food cultures of the Northeast and women in music in the Northeast. Five webinars and film release were organized and you can watch this via the link in the chat box. While the production of materials such as video interviews, podcast essays are also underway. The festival curators last year was Honzoi Barbara, who looked at the theme of food cultures, and Anung Lajoy Longkumar, who worked on music. This year, we will be releasing curated material from Cultures 2020 and create more resources like essays, podcasts, feminist interviews, feminist lab sessions, etc., to further our engagement and support the ongoing discussion in the Northeast. To find more about this project, you can have you can go to the link in the chat box. I would now like to introduce our speakers for today. Agnes Karsing is a rights activist associated with the Civil Society Women's Organization, CSWO Meghalaya. Medisa Nongrum is a farmer and activist associated with the Joint Action Committee against Umgod Dam, Meghalaya. Melmit Lepcha volunteers for the affected citizens of Testa Act in Sikkim. Our moderator today, Angela Rangat, is with Tour Meghalaya. Thank you all for being here. Please do listen carefully to the rules for participants attending today. 
Your video and audio has been auto automatically turned off on entry to prevent accidental audio and video issues. Audio, audience questions will be taken via the chat box, which we will close once we get a certain number of questions that can be answered today. However, uh, the rest and function will still be available to direct any queries to the, chat, uh, to the panelists. We will be dealing with questions uh, around 4.50 p.m. If there is any speaker in particular you want to direct your question to, please make sure to mention that as well. The discussion will be recorded and posted online via our social media channels. If you choose to ask a question via the chat box, your name might be mentioned during the webinar. Entry has been moderated to guard against trolling, no head speech targeting or, di or discriminating against any community will be tolerated. Any participants using such a speech will be removed from the webinar without warning. Before putting any speaker outside of this webinar in any printed or published material, please make sure to write to us at, uh, you know, to, uh, at contact at jubanprojects.org for clearance. Please note that the uh, participant details will be shared with the Hendrik Wallstift too. Please write to us again if you would like your participation to remain anonymous. Thank you so much. I will now hand over to Angela. Angela. Thank you, Angelica, and welcome once again to each and everyone who is here today. Looking forward to um, this discussion. And without taking too much time, I think uh, I'd just like to say that we'd like to invite the three uh, speakers, giving them about 10 to 15 minutes to make the introductory remarks. And after that, there can be a cross discussion between the panelists or questions posed by me, after which we shall take questions from uh, the participants. So as Angelica uh, laid out the context of this uh, webinar, the region has always been uh, said to be endowed with a lot of natural resources. And um, we have often been told that we ought to be harnessing our rivers, forests, land, you know, for the betterment of ourselves and also in the interest of the country. Uh, however, uh, the experience of this has often been more, not as a blessing, but we often say that the region is actually, uh, has a curse of resources, uh, which has then led to communities experiencing um, this wealth of resources and the development that it promises in a very different way. And today, I think we have uh, three very experienced uh, women who have been on the ground with their communities, um, mobilizing against trying to change the, the discourse of what development is, especially in the context of resource extraction. So without taking much time, I think I'd like to first um, welcome Kong Marisha, uh, who is a person who has uh, been there when there was a first attempt to build a dam on the river Umwat, and this was when she was a child, and recently the same idea has been mooted and she has led a movement that is trying to impress on the government to shelve such plans because the communities there feel that there'll be more destruction than gain. So Kong Marisha, um, can you please share your experiences? We can't hear you Kong Marisha. Am I audible, Kong? Yes, yes, now it's fine. Okay. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Kong Angela. Uh, good evening once again. Uh, uh, good evening, one and all. Once again, I'm Mary Shanorum. Thanks to the Suban for inviting me to be part of this uh, uh, culture of this uh, webinar. Um, I am so happy to share about my experience on our, res our resistance against Umgod Hydropower Electric Project where well, the government of Mekhalaya was planning to construct a dam in Umwad River. Umwad River is located in between Iskasi Hills and Chente Hills of Mekhalaya. So according to, according to my eldest information, 
the MECL had uh, since uh, 2005 approached few villages to inform about the project and to seek permissions from the authorities and villages to inform them about the project about the project and those few uh, villages will come the setting up of the project without a consultation with many villages of the area so according to uh, the impact assessment report um what dam going to be the biggest dam in mikhalaya <coughs> it 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 is a uh, 240 megawatt previous in the pro previous project the length of the dam is going to be 362 and the height is 111 meters and the construction is going to be six years okay so in the year 2008 officials of mecl has uh, started the environment assessment survey uh, study and the form were distributed among the people of the area and from then onwards okay under the under the leadership of some village heads a few villages people of the area formed a small farmers association called kakenhun kinongrap harwarba amwat okay from that time onwards i used to be one of the members of the farmers association i was still study that time i would also say i i i was still young whenever i had a holiday from call, from school or colleges i used to go to the uh, village along with uh, some elders from village uh, <clears throat> and we used to visit from village to vill village to village and make people understand on the harmful and the threat of uh, if the government uh, construct a dam in in umwat river where our people of the villages are completely as uh, depend their livelihood on agriculture near the river bank okay uh, the ground uh, mobilization is uh, i would say it was uh, quite strong that time because every now and then we used to organize uh, the public meeting and make people understand of course we are not against the development bringing in by the government but the threat is we are going to lose our our land and livelihood therefore the concern of the residents of the eight uh, villages from east Kasi hills uh, stand still and have a strong opposed to the project okay out of sudden in 24th uh, april uh, 2012 mecl organized a public hearing in siang Kanai village east Kasi hills many people registered their opposition uh, in this uh, project including the king of hiram chieftain of the area headmans and the kenhun kinongda bharwat ba muad the uh, farmers and the land owners um, because we were not accept their uh, presentation highlight by the mecl during that time since the study being re reported by them was not clear okay it was carried out uh, without seeing the consent of the uh, people from that area and the land owner not also given the details notice to the local doorbells of the village or the various uh, villages including the king so uh, the public uh, hearing at that time was therefore had a strongly opposed and boycott by the by the people of that area even then okay after the public hearing, the government of EECL keep on calling uh, us for meeting and seek out a permission on fi to finish of their uh, last stage survey after bypassing and overpower the local heads uh, men and also the landowners of the area. It, it was also a surprise, okay. Uh, the, concrete, uh, the concrete pillars was made in the agricultural land without seeking permission from the village headman or uh, from the landowner. We, the farmers of the area, understood that MSL wanted to take away and deprive our rights uh, uh, for uh, our, our rights and uh, also the right of the future generation. So. <clears throat> Uh, you know, the, uh, according to the EEI report itself says this, 
that if the construction of dam is happening, uh, the project will be affected uh, to the families, the income of the and the livelihood of the people also will be affected, and also the land and the properties of the people. Uh, and so uh, the ch uh, changing on the soil, vegetable, vegetations, and also human health of the people in that area. Uh, it also will bring uh, changes in water pollution, soil erosion, also immigration of the levels, deforestation and disturbance of the wildlife, so on and so forth. Uh, but still, uh, the government wanted to uh, proceed ahead with the project. So in our movement, various steps also has been taken to fight against this project, okay? We had a regular meeting and a crown uh, mobilization being organized to the communities. And also, uh, exposure visits have happening. Uh, it was in the year 2012, uh, 2013 onwards. So uh, are my people from the, uh, from the area, okay, from the uh, seven to eight villages, they went to, to, to see Kim and Assam for their exposure visit. And seek the idea how people the uh, uh, protest the government regarding the uh, the dam issue, and also I personally I was part of the protest uh, during uh, in 2013 in Dhemaji district when the people the protest against the Bansari dam. It was in in the evening. It was night time, 7:30 evening to 9 o'clock. They, they people, a kind of procession walking uh, on the road, on the roadside, along with the lamb, okay, in their hand, they said that we don't need a light, okay, we can still survive with lamb. That was a part of the protesting in Assam. And also, I was visited in uh, Bangalore uh, through this uh, environment support group. So they took uh, me there and they they took to the field to the village to the village where the people of the uh, of people of the village there they protest the government where they are going to set up the, um, this uh, solar light so so that i can uh, seek the idea and this idea all this idea and bring in and carry out to the to my village and discuss uh, and discuss with my village also, some social activists of North East People Alliance uh, visited and supported us uh, all the time. And also, they came uh, down to the to my village and to the uh, village of the six to seven villages. And also, we went down to the river to see the uh, the the river, the the Umwar River. And also, an opposition letter sent uh, letter sent by the seven villages to different uh, officers of the MECL, to the engineers, chief and engineers, MDC, CM of the district council, and also to the king, so on and so forth. So we have also organized uh, a kind of uh, press conference in the city to voice out our movement and protesting. We had a regular send our protesting for the press release also, but uh, I would, the last I would say, we are lucky enough we were able also to map out uh, and document the species with the help of uh, NESFAS, called NESFAS organization. At least we have a witness document in hand. So we found out uh, 284 species grows nearby Wa'amwad. We are uh, going to lose all this if the dam conception is uh, going on, okay. I'll tell you, uh, I tell you, in fact, Okay, the uh, the project for 2,240 uh, megawatt has been terminated by the government in August 2020. Uh, but the government they uh, changed their mind again in 2021 this year against more project again uh, again out of sudden the notification came out that the public hearing will be happen in Sianglai village. Uh, and Musikia that was on 8 and 9 April. Uh, the, the announcing the, of the public hearing 
on the internet only and also only in the newspaper not reaching out to the public of the area uh, also not providing the report in local language again the statement of the aie report itself is wrong no physical survey and assessment was done by the government uh, the report says only 378 families uh, going to be affected but uh, thousands and thousands of peoples of many villages who live alongside the river going to be affected if the construction of the dam going, uh, going to be happen. In the notification uh, also stated that if any objections uh, were found in the notification, uh, write an object uh, letter to Mikhalaya State Pollution Control Board. So many written objection letter made by us, by farmers association, youth groups and uh, every village uh, and submitted to to uh, Mikhalaya Pollution Control Board. And even the uh, NESFAS organization was also written as submitted their objection, its uh, objection uh, letter. But um, but the, pros, uh, the, the government proceed ahead with the public hearing. So uh, we went also to demand the report they provided, they provided us a thick English report. How will local people understand? And we were working so hard to make a strong uh, community mobilization and had meeting every, almost every day and made people to have a, a one voice of understanding and also travel here and uh, to meet people and seek people uh, to help us constantly also contact people in West Chantia Hills that they also must have a strong opposition from their side. Uh, one week uh, before the public hearing, we had a public meeting among us that we came to, uh, we came into the conclusion and decided that we should block the road and not allow Mikhalaya State Pollution Control Board and MECL to proceed Ahead to the venue uh, Siang Khanai village um, mm, and stood up in the road whole day demanding to scrap the Mika, the Mika Dam project. And we stood there uh, since 5 a.m. morning till 7.30 uh, p.m. in the evening. So on the 9th uh, April 2021 at Mosakia, also public hearing happened. The same as we did, it was uh, blocked and boycotted by people of West Chantia Hills uh, uh, district. So public he hearing was, I would say it was failed since we have blocked and boycott. After a week, uh, power minister said in social media that government will proceed ahead with the project, though we, block, uh, though we boycott the public hearing. Uh, and then soon after public hearing, and then uh, the joint action committee was was formed where well, the member of this uh, uh, committee was from different areas okay and our movement i would say become stronger and stronger where the village headmen of different uh, of different villages and members of the joint action committee met cm different uh, previous uh, ministers demand the government to stop the project also various status from Villages uh, from uh, village Darbas, youth groups, Kakanhun Kinong Reb Harubak Mwad, Anchak has been submitted to CM and ministers with certain statements. Um, uh, if I can just interrupt you, um, if we can maybe at this point uh, share some uh, visuals and then we can continue uh, to get uh, a sense uh, of where now the protest and the resistance is at we can move on to also the next speaker but if we can share some visuals at this point of time and then maybe we'll again uh, join um, with your okay. discussion oh okay maybe we can do these uh, songs mobilization songs yeah. and video okay because i think um if that can be done sadaf because just to get a sense of this um yeah. You know the resistance that is there on the ground because as Comrade Shah was saying, nothing is yet resolved. Um, there's this back and forth happening with the government and the Joint Action Committee. 
And uh, I think now there will continue to be some meetings, etc. But just to give an audience a sense of the area and also the mobilization that happened, uh, really happened around a beautiful video and uh, music that they created, you know. Uh, so if you can just share that and after which uh, Kong Marisha will get back to you, but we'll move on to Kong Agnes after we see some of these uh, visuals because it's the same state and Kong Agnes, I would like to hear Kong Agnes's response and um, comments on, you know, how legitimate and valid really are processes such as a public hearing or an EIA, when you could hear what Kong Marisha was saying that actually much of it was just, you know, yes. done for the sake of it. Uh, so, yeah, so I'll just share my screen. Yeah, yeah. If you I'm can just, just the, yeah. showing the visuals yeah. and then uh, we can move on to Kong Agnes. Uh, Kong Agnes has worked extensively uh, trying to document, you know, the breaches of the NGT orders around coal mining. So we'll talk about that, but you can enjoy some of these visuals of this river Umot. And if Marisha, you'd like to say something as these visuals are happening, after which we'll quickly move to Kong Agnes. Sure. Can you can you see the visual? Is my screen being yes, is yes, visible? Yes. Okay, okay. I'll just go along. With it. You can just keep. I think. Uh, uh, hello, Kong. Kong. Yes. Yes, Kong Marisha. Yes, yes. So this was the scenario of the uh, Umad River and the landscape. Can you can we see the next slide? Next, 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 next slide. Hello, uh, yes. Kongandila. Yes, yes. yes. This, uh, this is this, uh, yes. Is it visible? It's yes. visible, Sadaf. It's visible. You carry on. You just uh, go along with uh, Kong Marisha as she speaks. So we see this uh, people around, and they, we had a meeting in the village, a mobilizing meeting, and also you see, no, written here the no, what, uh, what, no, no. What, no more what, what, saying like that. And this time, uh, the people of the Northeast People Alliance, they came to uh, our village. And also this, also you see me there. Uh, I was uh, going from uh, my village to another village and I had a uh, home visit to, under, to and made people understand about the harmful of the umwad. And also these pictures you will see, we had also a kind of protesting even in the uh, what the river itself and uh, this photo uh, it was in in the month of the april it was during the public hearing when we blocked the road and not allowing the government to proceed to the Senkhnai village and this is uh, the last photo uh, okay you will see this this petty field and along with the counts and all and uh, in this field you uh, you can also see a small, small, like a small hut, okay, where people, they live there only the whole week and they return back home uh, Saturday and Sunday. Then again, Monday, they go down to the Umar River and uh, uh, do their agriculture practices. Okay, Kong. Then uh, I must also uh, include here that uh, finally on the 1st September, okay, this year, Coleman has been given a notice that they have scrapped the project. Okay, but still our movement continue until we re we receive a written document from the Coleman. Uh, in that document, it must be saying that Umod project have scrapped uh, forever. So yes. maybe my last okay, my last word maybe uh, I would like you to play also the mobilized song and video for us to see. Yes, I think we can hear it for a few minutes before we move on to Kong Agnes. So the resistance and the protest continues because I think what the Joint Action Committee was demanding was a moratorium on uh, a dam on Ummat. Sadaf, can you just play that for a while?
There is an English translation to the song. If people are interested, please we can share. because we are running out of time we can share this video with our participants the link of this and also the translation thank you so much kong marisha we got a real sense of the area and the struggle uh, kong agnes can i bring you in now if you can tell us about some of the activities you have been involved in around the coal mine issue as well as the coke industries now that have come up in the same area in jaintia hills Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, uh, before I start giving whatever I little that I know, uh, I strongly also uh, oppose the Omot Dam. And I've been there recently, there, and I've seen uh, towards down towards the Umwat, and uh, we strongly oppose and we support with uh, Marisha. Yeah, okay, yeah, and uh, in Meghalaya, uh, maybe in the whole of Northeast, uh, because, uh, because of the resources, they are all eyeing here and they think they can just come and uh, plunder. But uh, as you can see uh, now, especially on the coal, which has uh, brought in a lot of money for the few who are promoting a lot of violence also. And um, as we can, we have been following because uh, people are complaining, people, the poor are complaining from East Jaintia Hills and even from the areas of Southwest Khasi Hills, the, the waters are polluted and their lands are taken away. Their lands are taken away and uh, the poor cannot raise their voice uh, because they're, uh, you know, they are, um, it is like a, a mafia group and promoted, I would say promoted by uh, governments, earlier governments, this government, they they allow they promote and uh, we can see also that uh, uh, this um, bureaucracy they are uh, keeping quiet they know that there are violence uh, they are yeah they are violence they are they are, they are um, uh, destruction of the around on coal and how the water is polluted and uh, but uh, you know uh, they had uh, in 2008 the, they allotted uh, one rupee per square feet to some IS officers and so they kept quiet they don't see anything and that is why all the destruction all the uh, you know and people have to come out and uh, and um, protest and if you raise your voice, you'll be, you know. But people are people, even in Northeast, we want peace. We want to be, live, to be able to live in a peaceful and uh, safe place uh, with uh, so much of a beautiful uh, environment and uh, the hills and uh, but you, if you go and see to East Jaintia Hills, if you go to uh, West Khasi Hills, and uh, even some Garo Hills, they are saying now that they are mining. And uh, the coal is, even when NGT has passed an order in 2014 that rat hole mining is banned. But they are still doing it. And on the sly, with the cover up, with the protection they are still doing 
and people are dying because uh, laborers they come in laborers are brought in earlier they traffic children then they bring in the poor and every time when we uh, earlier when we before we were attacked earlier we went and met the people and asked them where have they come from they come from the some of them even from nepal and uh, they are um, uh, some from the uh, neighboring uh, states and uh, they get around 800 900 uh, per, uh, per thing that they can bring out so that that itself is um, that itself is a uh, violation uh, trafficking it becomes like human trafficking and uh, recent uh, in uh, june uh, even january and june uh, people laborers died in the coal mines and they, uh, they could not send uh, take out all the bodies also they could not find the bodies because you know the the coal the coal uh, the the pit which is so deep it is uh, 500 feet down in Meghalaya, they cannot, it is not feasible for uh, coal uh, because it goes, you have to go right down 500 plus feet down and then they will see the seams. And, uh, and then when they go down, they, they make the seams and they make the rat hole, mine, uh, rat hole uh, uh, they dig and then they go deep another 600 feet that is what a laborer had said going down 500 and then they go horizontally and they dig and they go you know they encroach into other people's land also because you know many seams are there so one sees they go one side then the other so it is like it's like a you know a maze and it could we are waiting for a disaster we are waiting for a disaster and uh, it's not that we are, nobody is seeing the all those authorities who are around going with uh, you know expensive cars they go around because the roads the roads in meghalaya you can see the roads are potholes except except the areas where these uh, vip's work uh, travel it's okay, but uh, it is mostly uh, pathetic, and people have to protest every time, and they have to. They, sometimes they even carry their, their sick people. If a pregnant woman, they have to walk uh, by themselves. They have to just carry because the roads are bad, and uh, people. Yeah, <coughs> it always comes out in the news, even if in uh, in certain areas where even media cannot uh, bring out news because they are attacked so it's a uh, in 2018 uh, amita sangma and me we were attacked and it was like a threat for everyone maybe they think that uh, uh, this is like don't dare come speak out or come and you know expose about all this uh, uh, violations and uh, but I would say when God is with us we will not keep quiet because we have to help the other people who are in trouble and many people need that's why government cannot provide a data they are saying that it is a, a livelihood people there are doing agriculture also mostly and it is only when these uh, big corporates plumbing, uh, plundering the resources, and that is how they're destroying everything, the environment. And uh, uh, I would say that it is, it is us for, uh, uh, if we just keep quiet, we cannot, uh, I mean, you know, we cannot uh, tell, bring out, uh, we cannot fight this.
because they groom. They groom militancy, they groom uh, terror, drugs. They are pushing drugs now. And it is all a nexus, a syndicate. And I would say that unless we start keeping, we start speaking out, I would say we can stop them. And uh, yeah, I've got, uh, I've uh, given Angela, I hope she can share those few which I have, uh, because I could not take out more. So the mm -hmm. little that I've. Okay. Thank you so much, Kong Agnes. I think uh, all of us in the region and in the country, in fact, uh, have deep respect for you because you have been relentless in using the RTI in taking out documents to show the violation, NGT violations or the violations even against, you know, uh, this idea of the district councils and, you know. <laughs> um, so it's been, uh, I think, a real, um, it's been difficult for you, we know, but also it's been so inspiring. And um, I think that we uh, will be even more inspired because you continue to, to do this, uh, even after that horrific attack uh, on you. And um, recently in West Janja Hills, it's not no longer just the coal, um, illegal coal extraction, but uh, even the coke factories. Coke factories, yes. Right, which are really polluted. And where is the coke? Where is the coal coming from? We have to question that also. So the mining is still carrying on because, uh, you know, uh, the coal goes from these places, goes down to Burnihat, and there are many factories there, industrial units that are not working, but, uh, you know, they get a connivance and the coal goes there and from there it comes back to the, to the, uh, to these coke factories. So, so it is on the yeah. So the, the pollution, the everyday pollution, we saw very recently, just a few weeks ago. Um, you know, as you said, that people are very fearful, but we see that there's also now voices of resistance coming out from that area because during this, um, there were several protests on the coke factories, which is ongoing. Unfortunately, those young women who led those protests couldn't be with us today. Hopefully, we can have another discussion with them some other day. Uh, but because of time constraints, it's already 4.50. I think this webinar has to go on for another 15 minutes because we have to uh, be on five o'clock because we have also Mayal Mit, who's again, another person who's been very involved in Sikkim uh, with the affected citizens of Tista. We'll hear from you before we can again open it up for discussion with the participants and between um, the, the panelists. So Mayal Mit, over to you. Okay, good evening everyone. Okay, my name is Mayal Mit Lepcha. I am the, also the president of Sikkim Indigenous Lepcha Tribal Association. And I'm also general secretary of Affected Citizen of Tista, which is for, for, uh, famously known as ACT in Sikkim. And firstly, I would really thank Zuban for inviting ACT. So for in today's, I would like to, you know, uh, in Sikkim, we have more than 30 dams and more than 20 pharmaceutical companies, but out of which the recent, uh, like we are protesting with like the, the urgency of support needed from the, across the globe is stage, uh, Tista stage four, that is 520 megawatts, a dam which is proposed by the NHPC. The continuing struggle of the Lepchas, the indigenous communities in Zongu, Lepcha Reserve Area against National Hydroelectric Power Corporation Limited, that is NSPC. A brief background of the hydropower project stage 4, 520 megawatts, proposed by NSPC in Zongu, that is in North Sikkim, India. Tista stage 4, 520 megawatts electric project is a run of the river scheme and one of the many hydroelectric projects proposed on the river Tista in Sikkim. The project is proposed between stage 5, 510 megawatts, and stage 3, 1200 megawatts, which both projects have been commissioned in the year 1999 and 2017, respectively. Sikkim is one of the smallest states in India with a total geographical area of 
7096 square kilometer constituting 0.22 of the total geographical area of India. It shares international borders with Nepal in western side and Bhutan in eastern side and by China in north while sharing national border with West Bengal in southern side. The total population of Sikkim is 6,7688 as per the census of 2011. Zongu was set up as a reserve for indigenous literature of Zongu, exclusively and administrated directly by the King Chogyal through the private state office of the Queen. The notification issued in 1956 and notification 3069 in 1958. It is still protected under the Article 371F of the Indian Constitution and the Representation of Peoples Act 1980. The Zongu is the holy place and entry into Zongu Reserve is prohibited to outsiders even from within the state except special permission. There is three checkposts to enter Zongu. The population of indigenous literature in Zongu, which is directly on threat since our population is only 6,000 approximate which might marginalized when stage four, mega dams or any kind of developmental activities comes to Zongu. We have rejected forest clearance of stage four under the Forest Right Act in 2018. We have boycotted public hearing for stage five, stage four, sorry, 520 megawatt. The main tributaries of River Tista flows from this region and there is countless streams flowing down the main Tista River, adding a very rich biodiversity. It is a land and a home to the rare species of flora and fauna. Forest area with this river and mountain are sacred and of great cultural importance to the indigenous lectures as they worship and believe that River Rongyong is the most sacred among the river in Zongu and Sikkim as whole. The indigenous lectures believe after they die, the soul travel back to Pumzulang, which is a soul resting place, which is at the foothills of Kanchanjunga through River Rongyong. In lecture culture, there is no concept of heaven or hell. The Kanchanjunga National Park is located in the vicinity of the Stage 4 project site. And it is declared as India's first mixed World Heritage Site by UNESCO in the year 2006. This project, comes, the, uh, this project covers the whole of Lower Zongu Lecture Reserve. And this stretch of River Tista is the only last left free-flowing river in the state of Sikkim. After signing the Memorandum of Understanding by the state government in the year 2006, since then there has been a strong resentment from the indigenous lectures of Zongu. The indigenous lectures of Zongu demanded the state government to scrap the project in interest of indigenous tribe of Sikkim, the lectures, and declare this stretch of 11 kilometers as river sanctuary. The people of Zongu fear that the livelihood, the culture, the land, and the fragile ecology of Himalayan belt will be lost if these dams are built. Affected citizen of Tista movement consists of most affected and vulnerable indigenous people and had started campaigning against the dams. And in the year 2007 to 2009, there was an indefinite relay hunger strike for 915 days. Almost uh, 43 indigenous uh, lectures, including seven women, school and colleges going students and Buddhist monks were arrested in the protest. And in the year 2009, they were taken to state jail for more than one month while their trial took three years and ultimately ACT member won the case. A brief introductions on the concern of indigenous people affected by the project, the lectures being animistic in worship have meditators, sh shaman like priests, like Mun and Wong things, who constantly invoke the spirits of mountains, rivers, forests, etc., to ensure that the human spirits are in constant coexistence state. The invocations of Mun and Wong things have been verbally passed down through the centuries. And if one listens carefully <clears throat> of the, the names of the lectures, name of mountains, rivers, forests, valleys, etc., are constantly mentioned. The lecture feels that they are a part of immediate environment they thrive on and never the masters of the resources to exploit and destroy. This 
Healthy relationship the lectures share with their immediate environment has always been a strong motivation for the most lecturer to stay rooted and voice their support whenever they feel the land is threatened. There is a frequent increase of flash floods, landslides, drying of springs water, decrease of snowfall. The Zongu people have already contributed enough for the second state government from stage five and stage six, stage three, sorry. In Sikkim, we lectures have been protected only in papers, not in reality. Violating and diluting of laws by the government itself is a great danger and threat to our communities. Best examples are the notification number 3775 issued by the state government of Sikkim. Lectures have been declared as a primitive tribe group in the state of Sikkim on 18th of November 2006 which has been passed through Sikkim Assembly Resolution and Executive Order. Another notification number 642 issued by the state government of Sikkim through cabinet decision on declaring and notifying Zongu area, North Sikkim as Lepcha indigenous habitat on 12th of November, 2018. This law was passed through the cabinet decision. The law says protecting the rights of indigenous lectures of Sikkim on January 3rd, 1897, Sir John Claude White, the first British political officer, banned transfer of Bhutia lecture land to non Bhutia lecture. On May 17, 1917, Charles Bells, ICS Superintendent, Sikkim State, issued a detailed notification, Revenue Order Number 1, prohibiting transfer of Bhutia lecture land to non Bhutia lecture, which is still exists under the Article 371F of the Indian Constitution. Impact of indigenous women and the recommendations to the address those impact. In Zongu, the place called Mantam, in the year 2016, we witnessed a massive landslide and uh, uh, mass massive landslide and form a natural lake in Rongyong River. And now we call this place as a Mantam Lake. Several houses were submerged, a lot of domestic animals were being killed. Bridge connecting to 13 to 14 villages are submerged, and unfortunate, the whole village has to be has to be evacuated. Till today, the Sikkim government failed to construct a concrete bridge. It has been more than five years. Is uh, like they have com completely failed to construct a concrete bridge where 13 to 14 villages are still cut off from the rest of the world. Sub centers are running under staff and there are no adequate supply of medicines. For simple ultrasound, ANC mothers have to come down to Gantok and for, deliv for delivering their babies, they have to come down before 10 to 15 days and it is a burden to our a ANC mothers. There have been frequent flash floods and the area are very fragile and very eco-sensitive and due to this, a village called Pasingnang in Upper Zongu has been evacuated and still government failed to address the resettlement till today. The impact of these dams, stage five and stage three, have hit the livelihood of our people. Downfall, uh, downfall of large cardamom. But uh, still our stubborn indigenous lecture continue to plant large cardamom, hoping that a year will be a more productions, but always gets disappointed. The area where the stage four has been proposed are the most is the most fertile, and we grow we get best oranges in in this area we get the best oranges and that too the production is declining every year. We get good productions of gingers, gavas, pineapples, and bananas in this belt. We grow paddy in this belt, but for the last few years people have stopped planting paddy because of drying of spring water and to not adequate of uh, rainfall, rainwater also. If the stage four comes, the most beautiful and maximum number of big tributaries of River Tista will be diverted inside the tunnel. Lastly, thank you, uh, Zuvan, and thank you the audience for like uh, patiently listening to our voice. And we really need your support in saving the last free flowing river in Sikkim. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, my and I, Yeah, I want to, I've got a short video because I'm in hospital right now, so I could not you know, prepare well. And I just want, I want to request, uh, I've given one video to just, yes, to, she, she it's a very short. Yeah. 
Thank you so Thank much, you so much. We know that you're looking after somebody with COVID in hospital and yet you agreed to be part of this panel. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. I just want to add, add a little bit. This is in the bank of River Ongyong, and since it's very, you know, it's very sacred for the community. Any rituals, anything like we, we. This is a recent uh, the video that I've taken on fifth of October. We had a uh, we had a massive, uh, you know, mass uh, uh, meeting. So we were trying to get help and help from the, you know, from the river rivers and from the nature to protect to give us. Uh, uh, strength in protecting and fight to fight against the government in protecting these rivers. And if anybody has uh, questions, you can uh, yeah. drop it in the chat, so or you can, yeah, we can so you can send in my email. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, it's interesting because I mean you have a full-fledged ritual on the river, and when the Umgat protest was happening, I think that song which you played a little bit also talked about how that river is actually a mother it has been a mother for generations and yet now they're trying to destroy what it has given right marisha yeah i yeah i have my my support is also there for umat times you know full support i think we have yeah, to thank fight, you. we have to fight unitedly you know yeah yeah thank we you. need to i think build um the collaborations and the understanding across regions but obviously um we cannot miss the fact that three of you who are leading such important resistances on the ground are women. So if I can direct a question about, do you think that eventually the climate crisis, the environmental crisis, the burden finally falls on women? Women to do the cleaning up, women to do the, you know, uh, protest. What do you have to say about that? Do you think it's a burden or do you think it's a privilege? I, I think it's a, 
Oh, it's a problem. I said it's a. It, I think it's a privilege because uh, in my region, I think the most uh, like uh, what do you call it? most strong groups are women, the self help group, because I work with them. I give them awareness. I give them you know the webinar meetings, online meetings, and they have been a very 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 strong uh, you know uh, the strong group in this movement till today, and even like. I, I uh, have not, it's in the recent, uh, on 5th of October, there was a, a self-help group woman who spoke on that meeting. I think her speech gone viral, it crossed one lakh views, you know. That, I think, and it's a responsibility for women also because, because we, um, as being a woman, as a mother, you know, for the coming generation, because I also feel, because I studied in scholarship to in one of the good school in Sikkim, uh, in name of Dongu. So I also feel that it is my responsibility to give back to my community. That is what, like at the end of the day, I'm so happy. And when I, I when I resigned working in university, people, my friends, were, they, they, were, they were quite, you know, they were shocked that I, I was mad. But now working for past 14 years with ACT, I'm so satisfied and so, I feel good for working for my, for my land, for my community, you know. So, I like ma'am you as you said that uh, it's like the global warming is real climate change is real I think people in decision making people in power I think you should come out from the comfort zone you know you are the you are the you, they are the one who you know organize have meeting have conference on global warming and climate change but we are in the ground level who is really really working for the climate change and the global warming I think they should, instead of uh, making the dra drama, I think they should listen to the voice of these indigenous people and voice of the, the villagers who has really, really been affected by the, the, the mega dams or mega like, multi uh, project, you know, developmental project. In Sikkim, not only uh, the not only uh, uh, this electric, uh, like people are affected with uh, hydropower project, you know. Uh, we are plus we are having a burden of pharmaceutical companies which these companies are, we have more than 20 uh, pharmaceutical companies and more pipelines and they are built in the river uh, in the banks of river tisa and uh, river rangit and nobody is uh, nobody is bothered about the pollution that from the pharmaceutical is coming uh, going inside this uh, this uh, river and recently our state government has declared cutley one of the fish as a state State fish, okay. So, to, uh, like individual that you want to sell, if you really want to declare a fish as a state fish, the first thing is you have to save the rivers. That, that is what I want to tell. Thank you. Yeah, I think they're all always such contradictory statements and ironic statements that state governments uh, tend to make. One being that, for instance, um, Kong Agnes may like to comment on this. This whole issue of coal mining, they say that it brings resources to the state, they say that it's a source of livelihood. And here on the other hand, they're trying to destroy livelihoods, uh, as we know it along Omgot, uh, you know. So what would you do? You, would you like to comment on that on the on this whole idea of how when you were protesting and trying to mobilize against coal mining, you were taking away people's rice plates that's what was being said but also another question with along with this is that do you think that that kind of you know commentary was also because um, you were a woman who was leading this resistance it was like um, it was Sorry. like uh, you, they're giving more power to those who want to abuse and ridicule women and uh, uh, then you you see a lot of full of hate and uh, it is uh, you know destroying the society also because in a society we have uh, men also women also and uh, together we can bring a we can bring peace but it is just that uh, the people in power they have to destroy that fabric you know so it is very 
it's sad, but I feel that we should all start thinking and youth especially come out so that we can bring the change uh, rather than, uh, you know, believe in those in power. Because it is not, it will not be like that. In fact, it will be more than they'll just destroy more. Kong Marisha, uh, I think just the last few words from you, perhaps, and then we can, there are no questions from the audience. I think they're a little starstruck with all three of you, <laughs> that there are no questions. Um, but uh, Kong Marisha, you were just a young girl yourself when the first protests and mobilization against um, what happened. Then JP, the group that was supposed to construct the dam, went bankrupt. That is why they didn't go ahead. Then now again, the proposal and you yourself bring your daughter to the protests. Uh, are you hopeful? Do you think that there will be victory and that Ummat Dam will not be constructed? Or do you think that um, your daughter will again have to lead another resistance? Uh, yes, Kang. <clears throat> Uh, yes, uh, whenever I think about Ummat, okay, about the future of the of my community of my daughter. So I have a one year, uh, a one year eight months daughter. So I always think about my daughter because uh, you know the the land is we 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 should say that our land is our blood. Huh? The land is our blood. Our blood. So we don't. Uh, I really don't want to lose uh, my land, my religious land, and also my community land. Okay. So because we all of us in the in the community in the village of the in the, the people of that area, we completely depend uh, our livelihood, our um, food from the Umwar River. So uh, I really don't want uh, this. Uh, my daughter to be to 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 face like and to to trouble like me okay to travel like me because uh, uh, when when i was uh, in college i always when I, whenever i had i as i have mentioned you that whenever i have holiday i used to go back to the community and mobilize mobilize community uh, walking from one village to another village it is not really easy okay it is a quite for us because as a women, as a women, we have to uh, work night time. We have to conduct a meeting. It's not easy for us, but still, I'm so. It is. I would say it is a privilege for me because even the community uh, headmen, even the community peoples of my village, they always empowering me and always uh, supporting me. Okay, they always encourage me to voice out uh, any issues. Uh, regarding any issues uh, happening in the village okay uh, and also uh, uh, community my community always look up at me if we have any any issue related to the community so i have to take that burden uh, as a woman okay Kong. hello <laughs> yes i can hear you Kong marisha thank you that's so true. There's one uh, question that has come from um, Dr. Ashish uh, Kaka for Kong Agnes. I'll read it out, Kong Agnes. Uh, thank you for this wonderful webinar. My question is for Kong Agnes. As said, there is a nexus between politicians, the mafia, and influential people in the state, due to which environmental and other destruction is rampant. What are the possible solutions apart from RTIs and raising consciousness among the people? Uh, yeah. Uh, it is also, uh, you know, we also s start thinking how to, and um, it is, uh, you know, I feel that we should also. Uh, since the, uh, since there is the um, election electoral uh, people should come out and uh, uh, so that they can be there they can help the people and uh, 
there are many who are uh, you know who would want to uh, participate into the uh, in the fray and uh, even angela is coming and we are wishing her all the best and i hope other youths will start coming out and uh, we also need to do a good research so that you know they'll get the right uh, answers and um, and also we have to reach out together we have to reach out we cannot you know we cannot um, be secluded we have to be uh, together and reach out with each other so that we can connect and uh, yeah that's what i can say and god has we have to yes i all, think we need to forge those networks and work together thank you kong agnes there's another question uh, from uh, juliana is it um julina kashyap it is a very in insightful webinar from the grassroots level my question is for any of the speakers on what are challenges faced by them during these environmental movements as a woman uh, within the protests as well as with the opposition so what are the things you face as challenges as women any one of you can take that question Mayalmit, would you like to respond? Okay. <laughs> uh, the challenges I faced when I was very young, when I was in first year college, I had to drop my uh, regular college. And since then, I could not do my regular college. Okay, that is one of the challenge. And other challenges is like, sometimes it's so difficult to uh, make our own people understand the importance of environment. And other challenges is like, whenever we try to change, uh, we try to get the strategy done, done like, like one of you said that, if we can collect, uh, if we can electorate the representative, you know, the, the one that we wanted, okay. We, from the day one, we get them elected. When they are in the power, they try to, you know, forget what they were, what they're supposed to, you know, do in that position. Those are the challenges that faced. But I'm so lucky, personally, I'm very lucky because my parents, my relatives, my friends have supported me since the day I've joined uh, this ACT movement. So, and the challenge, I, I think, I, but I don't, I, I have not, not, I have not got much challenges, but it's so motivating, so inspiring, making other women, you know, make them understand sometimes. And when they, when they understand what are the motives, what are the, obje uh, ob the objectives that we are working on. And uh, working for the last 14 years, I have motivated the women's, uh, the self-help group in Zongu. And we have started this uh, free flowing rivers, not only in Zongu, but other, other four districts of Sikkim. And uh, uh, the, it's been like last few years, two, three years, the younger generation, we have more, daughters coming to the joining the movement that is more inspiring i think uh, challenges are every day everywhere but it is up to the individual up to a person to how you how you face it and how you move forward i think that is what i wanted to tell thank you yeah thank you uh, truly i think women should be on the ground but more and more i think we should be at different levels of decision making in community uh, in even at the legislative level. But again, sometimes, as they say, um, power corrupts. So whether woman or man, as you said, sometimes they back on their promises and especially on the environment, everyone thinks mm -hmm. that they can do as they please. But uh, there's one more question from Reshma uh, to any one of you. How can those of us who don't live in, the, in these regions do to help? What can we do to help? Thank you so much for this insightful session and in solidarity and with deep respect for the speakers. So what can people from outside the region do to help? Any one of you, what, how can we build solidarities with people from outside like Reshma? She would like to know, is there anything in particular that they can do to support these movements in the region? 
Can I say? Yeah, please. Yeah, um, as we uh, we need a lot of support. Uh, share our uh, share our videos and our whatever uh, you know the public uh, uh, problems. They share pictures. We tell them to take pictures and all that. And uh, here in um, in North East, uh, funders are coming in to fund so that they can exploit. You know, uh, from international uh, finances. So uh, we should share so that their states, their countries will know that uh, their funding will exploit us. So if that can be shared so that, you know, the people will know what is happening. You know, that's a little that I can think, you know, I used to think how to stop all this also. But uh, if people, we can help to share. I used to do that also. I share a lot and I get a lot of information later also. And uh, uh, we can stall a lot of things, which uh, if they start to, uh, like uh, there was one uh, uh, hospital they tried to open here, medical uh, college, but uh, they funded, they're trying to arrange with a person who's, uh, who's a fraud. So we are trying to share, share, share so that they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's important uh, to ensure that information flows and also that especially uh, development um, when there's corruption, I think funders ought to know and when it's being misused for exploitation. So thank you again so much to all the three speakers. Thank you to all the audience. It's 5.30. We've gone way beyond five o'clock, but I think we also started late. So if there are no more questions or comments from um, the participants and uh, if the um, panelists are in agreement we can wrap up for today is that all right i think we ought to meet again thank you so much once again and maybe we can just flash some of those photos which kong agnes shared which we couldn't share earlier as we wrap up thank you again everybody bye thank you thank you everyone for uh, the lovely discussion and thank you yeah, thank you to all the participants too for joining us. The recording of this webinar will be put online on YouTube and to view our previous webinars for cultures of peace, fragrance of peace through our lens, reframing the domestic and a crisis of care, feminist perspective on the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown in India. These are some of our uh, other projects. You can go to our YouTube page and uh, our next webinar is on Wednesday, 21st, October uh, from 4 to 5 p.m. and we will continue to engage with the issues raised in these conversations through other future webinars. So please do follow us on social media for future events. Have a good day and good night. Thank you, Angelica. Just some images from West Janta Hills and the coal mining. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. We'll meet again.